everyone, it's Ross, and today we're going to talk about our jujubes. It's been um, quite cold here. We don't really have much time left to the season. Um, there is actually a potential frost tomorrow. And there's a few things I want to do to kind of prepare some of my other trees uh, for the potential frost. And the jujubes are no exception. Um, they're somewhat of a decently reliable crop here. Um, especially in containers, you can get them access to more heat. Uh, particular varieties will do much better than others. Lee and Lang seem to do very well, and those are the two most common varieties. I also have Honey Jar, which um, seem to do quite well as a younger tree. Um, and these are my four Dejubi trees, guys, and we're going to do a bit of a harvest now simply because the frosts are coming in um, the jujubes are on the tree and they some of them have yet to turn red that's kind of when you know they're ripe uh, if I pick these off here which is a bit difficult you know this is uh, if I bite into this this is kind of like an apple that doesn't taste all that great it's a pretty crappy version of an apple but if you let them dry on the tree or alternatively, we're gonna take these in the house and we're gonna dry them in the dehydrator for a very short time and they will turn red. The sugars will increase and uh, they'll have more of a date-like consistency, which is why people call jujubes a Chinese date, even though, if you ask me, they're nothing like a date from like the Middle East, you know, that you would normally find them. So we're gonna go around to these trees here we're gonna pick them and uh, you know that way when the frost comes in I don't really know actually what the frost will do to uh, jujubes on the tree but I imagine it's not that great <laughs> um, this season for whatever reason the jujubes were a bit later than previous years I don't know why um, the jujubes I'm picking right now are actually from a variety that I grafted this year. Uh, it's called Zhuzhou. And I had a feeling that my Lang, for whatever reason, is just not very productive. And you can see there's two different limbs here coming out in either direction. This is, uh, this is Lang, which needs pollination from other jujubes, but is said to be reliable here. And then on the left is Zhuzhou, uh, which doesn't need pollination from other jujubes. And I figured Zhuzhou is pretty reliable here, according to my sources. Um, so I figured I'll graph something onto Lang to see if Lang could get pollinated better. Even though I have, you know, there's five different jujube varieties here. This is a brand new one that's already going dormant. This one's called Sugar Cane, and it didn't fruit for me this year, but it's it's super young. Um, just got it from the nursery, so you can't really expect too much, but these trees have in the past, when I've received them from the nursery of this size, this caliper, uh, they fruited for me the first year. Honey Jar did that last year. Uh, we did that the first year I got it. So we're just going to go around here, continue to talk more about this. And you can see here, this is something got to this. Something knocked this off, whether it's the, the wind or uh, an animal. Um, nothing seems to really bother the fruits too much, but there are occasionally squirrels and probably other rodents or groundhogs that may go after these. Um, the way that they fruit and the way that the, the branches uh, kind of form and the way you're supposed to prune them is pretty interesting. Some branches will end up being permanent. I think those are the branches that uh, it's, I have it, I probably have it backwards, but the branches that fruit will not be permanent, but the growth branches, the branches that just grow will be permanent. So there's two sets of branches, and it's interesting because it's weird how how you uh, 
have to prune these guys. You can see here, this one just came right off. And I think this is a branch that uh, would have fruited or probably flowered this year, but never set fruit. And you can see they're coming off very easily. Whereas some of these other ones here have already lignified. Those are new branches and those did not fruit. And those will be permanent. And next year, I believe, from the new branches that have formed, uh, will form fruit or fruiting branches. A combination of fruiting branches and permanent branches. So I guess the big winner this year was, uh, was Lee. And actually, there's some on the ground here. Something got to this one. So you can see there's definitely something attacking them. I think there was something when they had set their fruit. Something was definitely getting to them. Um, you know, everything in my yard at some point was attacked by something. <laughs> so I don't really know what it was exactly because there's so many different things. It's hard to say. But let me get back here to the other side. You can see this is a nice little cluster of fruits here. This is um, this is from Lee, and Lee has been definitely my best producer. I mean, these are nice sized too. Always been a nice size. This is the one people really like here in this uh, in this area. I can see why. And it, actually, the fruit set was so heavy that the branches have been weighed down, which is pretty cool. Um, I mean, they were pretty high up to begin with. So next year, I'm probably going to do more pruning on these. Um, I really would like to try one of these in the ground, but the problem is because they are hardy and they will stay here all winter. You know, the roots will not freeze. Sorry, that's actually uh, different trees here. <laughs> these are nectarines, but the roots of the jujube will not freeze um, even when it gets to zero degrees here. Uh, I'll mulch all these guys with straw, cover the pots, and that really helps to uh, insulate them in the wintertime. So I think that's kind of it, man. The crop was pretty low, pretty light this year. There's probably a few extra ones on the tree that I'm not seeing. There's one up here. There's a whole mixture of trees here, guys. Um, what we're going to do now, I think, is I'm going to go over these trees very quickly. See if there's any more fruit left on the tree. And then I'm going to dry these guys for you. Come back and show you guys the difference between what one of these tastes like right now and one of them that's dried. All right, so hold tight. Okay, so we've only been drying them for less than two hours. You can see they've all turned red from the green color that they were. And they'll get a darker red than this. And then they will, um, you know, these are kind of orange red right now. And then they'll start to shrivel up, sort of like this guy has started to. And you know, if you really dry them for quite a long time, they can store for a really, really long time. I mean, they could store for like a year. Um, these are really shelf stable, these things. I personally don't want to do that because I prefer the flavor not fully dried. But at this red stage here, starting to get shriveled, uh, but not fully shriveled. And they kind of taste like uh, oatmeal. So I'll show you guys when that when that happens there. All right, hold on. Okay, so we got everything dried, um, and I've been snacking on these. And before I eat them all, I want to make sure that I get this on camera for you all. Um, you know, there's some in here that are of different dryness, and I think I like them uh, not fully dried. So this one here is probably a perfect example. Let me take a bite of this. You'll see in here, there's a pit. Um, quite sweet. Kind of like, um, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it, I feel like the textures of like, um, 
like oatmeal after you cook it but it's sweet um, I don't know a little raisiny but not not a whole lot um, and here's the pit right there and the rest of it you know it's quite crunchy the skin um, so it's a nice little pairing of textures I think where you got the interior is like oatmeal and the exterior is super crunchy and pleasant to eat and then you got more dry and this is like uh, chewy the interior is no longer oatmeal it's um, it's quite um, more tough um, and in this form it can last quite a bit you can see the smaller ones here are dried more than the the larger ones because they just dry quicker here, I'll bite this one and we dropped it but I mean this is getting close to that stage I know it's hard to say it's hard to see you guys but you have to take my word for it that there's many stages to this fruit whether it's green red and then red that's like somewhat shriveled and then red that's fully shriveled fully dried and it's really an interesting fruit for that reason it's also very sweet I like it you know it's not gonna blow anybody away for sure but um, every time I eat this fruit I just think wow this is it's not bad I like it um, so yeah that's jujubes guys I hope you enjoyed this one um, I'll see you all for the next one, alright? Take care.